Real quick, can you just say uh, <laughs> good times? <laughs> if you want more content from We Studios, check us out at WePodcast.com. If you want more content, if you want more content from We Studios, <laughs> check us out at WePodcast.com. I need cue cards for that. I'm too drunk right now. All right. So yeah, go there if you uh, want to check out our Simpsons podcast, worst episode ever. Check out our Reddit, our Twitter, all that jazz. It's all there. All the links are there. And while you're there, you can also click our Amazon links, which help keep the show free. We get a little small cut. Or you can just go to Amazon.WePodcast.com. That's Amazon.WEE Podcast.com. WePodcast.com Dot com. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Sixty minutes are on the clock and straight out of Wii Studios. This is nineties percentile. My name is Jack, and my name is Dan, and we are talking everything nineties and maybe also everything before and after the nineties. The nineties. <laughs> that was implied in the sentence, uh, but I, I'm glad that you I just finished just off. You had an implosion <laughs> where you specifically said what was implied. Is that what is that I, what implosion I, means? I, I'm pretty sure that's what the word implosion <laughs> means. It's when someone says something that's implied. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Today I learned what I li- implosion means. I like how literally two minutes ago we were just talking about how we never have any dead air on the nope. show, and I'm just I got nothing. <laughs> you got Dra- nothing. Drawn blanks. All right, sixty yeah. minutes are on the clock and straight out of the sure, studio. Implosions. Whatever. Implying. Hey man, we're already forty seconds into the show. Oh, thank God. All right, we're so getting there. We're, we're almost done. <laughs> let's, it's just almost over. let's just run out the clock. <laughs> we don't have a guest today, so it's just uh, it's I just us. <laughs> it's a, it's a. It's one of those episodes. One of those Just solo. you and me. In one the, of those duo solos. In the Wee Sweat Lodge. <laughs> it's a Wee Sweat, sweat Lodge today. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so how you doing, Jack? We, we never just talk we're on never, this we show. We never do talk. We're always so focused on getting to the topics and actually discussing the 90s. Yeah, Let's yeah. not do that Let's today. Let's not do that today. Uh, I'm... I'm miserable. I'm just, all right. Let's talk about 90s. I don't want to talk about my horrible <laughs> life. All right. How um, are you? I'm good. When while, when you're listening to this, I'm if you're listening somebody's to somebody's okay. When it just comes out, I am uh it's my last day in Japan. So oh. I'm still out of the country at this point. Th- these were all banked episodes. Last day because you were killed by Godzilla. It's possible. <laughs> this is going to be it's a very possible. prescient uh, podcast. Yeah. So uh Mothra and Godzilla both went <laughs> down on me. Uh <laughs> <For the time. laughs> Did they forcibly <laughs> You know, have sex with you? I, I, it's not my place to say. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be my place to say, actually. If anybody. If, if, if not me, then who? Deidre's not speaking out. Rodan <laughs> it's watched two, in the corner. It's those two tiny Japanese women, <laughs> and they're like singing about how you're being yeah. raped by Godzilla like, and Mothra. Boy, what Dance a way. Get... <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter. You get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a way to go, though. Um, yeah, all right. So I guess we should just jump into our first topic, which is being raped by Godzilla. <laughs> Uh, no, are we ready for our first topic? We got the random topic generator. It's yeah. here. You guys submit the topics. Go and to 90th percentile. Do you submit them? 90th percentile.wordpress.com, our temporary website our per- that we've had temp- for 25 episodes. It's our 25th episode. Oh, we should mention it's that, our actually. Quarter quell. It's the quarter quell. We were so going to have all our previous guests we, on. We and brought back all the other. best guests, which is just you and me, buddy. <laughs> The, the rest can screw themselves. Yeah, we don't need all those people watering our da- watering yeah. down our genius. We want unadulterated Jack and Dan <laughs> time. So that's what we got. Uh, and we've got a random topic generator. So submit your '90s topics. It can be anything, super specific, super wide. You could submit what do you the like? '90s. That's what do you a topic. like? You like the specific topics? Or you like the wide topics? I kind of like the specific topics. I feel like we haven't gotten a really granular topic. Like I want someone to submit. Is that what granular means? Specific? I assume. <laughs> Are we implosioning? Implosioning um, again? I, I thought. It, I don't know. I never heard it used in that context. Yeah, granular means like getting down to like really, really, really oh, fine I said details. It meant like, uh, like oh man, my tea bag opened up. While I was brewing, and now my tea is granular. I think that's a that's like there are actual grains in your tea. Yeah. I think that's another way you can use the word granular. Oh, all right. Um, but yeah, I think someone should submit a topic that's like that scene in Jurassic Park. We already had Jurassic Park, right. but that scene where uh, Newman meets the other guy. Oh, Dotson, like hyper, hyper specific. Like really, really specific. I, I would be. I feel 100%. like we could have an entire would, hour on let's that talk scene about from that scene. Jurassic Park. Uh, you want a candy bar? Eh, eh, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> we could just talk about Dennis Nidri <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> I've talked about. Uh, oh, I think I talked about it. Did I talk about it in our Simpsons pod? Or maybe I talked you talk about, about his action figure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think I th- w- actually I think I talked about it in our third epi- third or fourth episode with Gabe about maybe, action Ninja Turtles maybe, action maybe. figures. Maybe I don't remember. But My yes. slim svelte. Yes. Dennis Nedry I Jurassic felt the Park need action to figure. Slim down Wayne Knight. Granular. Which, uh, which I looked terrible. it up here. 
uh, resembling or consisting of small grains or particles. So that's your T. Characterized by a high level of granularity. That's not a very helpful definition. <laughs> I don't see anything about being super specific. Well, that's, that's what it is, a granular database. Like, it's a very, there's a lot of shit in it. Um, so it's like my colon. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my <laughs> granular. Look at how in the hell am I supposed to know how to pronounce it based on that? Look, it's look they got. Well, the, there's a couple of schwas in there. What, a schwa is the upside down e. That is correct. So, like the people who I, who need to know how to pronounce these words are probably the people who don't know how to read that kind of stuff. True. I didn't even know that was that's what that was called. That's a schwa. schwa. You didn't pay like a pe- attention. Like Charles Schwa. <laughs> yes, like my bank, Charles <laughs> Schwa. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that makes it because the schwa is like a uh sound, so it's grand y lur. But how do I know the the schwa is a y sound? You just gotta know, bro. But I feel like you, you I feel like we were taught the schwa in school at one point. I don't remember ever being but taught. To be Did quite you have a honest. diagram? I, I was having this conversation the other day. Did you ever diagram sentences? Yes, in I don't think grade, I did. once ever diagrammed a sentence as part of my curriculum. I yeah. don't remember it at all. It is the only way that that stuff is kind of useful is if you're learning another language. Because I'm trying to, I've been trying to learn Spanish for a very long time. Me too, like 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, and Spanish has a whole different uh, sentence structure, and it's very confusing to me. So it kind of their sentences are in the shape of a pyramid. Oh, right, it's very, it's so <laughs> weird. First word, how do you diagram it? <laughs> With a protractor, I guess. <laughs> I guess. So uh, is this our first topic, the pronunciation of the word granular? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm surprised it's not actually right here. In the, I just Googled it. Yeah. I'm su- surprised there's not a button. But I'm guessing most people, if you wanted to know the pronunciation of a word with uh, technology these days, you there's would just usually a little yeah, audio button. Exactly. You hear someone go granular. Although, you know what? I don't think kids these days give a shit about how to pronounce words and aren't looking this shit up. Kids don't care. And they should be. Kids don't care about anything anymore. That's why Donald Trump is going to win the general election. (laughs) We're going to do a Megxit. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, boy. It's kind of weird that we we were talking last week about the Brexit because we had recorded that episode before the Brexit actually happened. And we had a British guest on. And we had a British guest on. And now the Brexit actually went forward, which I don't think either of us thought it would actually happen. I had a feeling it would. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But even though the polls were very much against it. It was close. Um, yeah, but I, I you're know. screwed, Britain. You probably know that by now. I bet by now, because we're recording this. It's Jan. It's Ju- January. You're it's in Japan. June, it's June 25th when we're actually recording this. Yeah, you're about to make your Japan. I'm about to J- leave Japan. For Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm feeling the Japangs of, of patriotism. Sushi? I don't know. I, I guess I don't know. I'm getting diarrhea while I'm being raped by Godzilla. <laughs> Jeez, poor Godzilla. <laughs> poor Godzilla. <laughs> this is my only defense mechanism <laughs> against his radioactive penis. Uh, I, but anyway, I don't want to make horrible rape jokes. But no, no, no. There's I don't something either, there about diarrhea being a defense mechanism. That's <laughs> very like, funny. I'm like a squid. Like it's like ink. <laughs> <laughs> I can just shoot it out when a predator is, is near. I'm just oh, afraid boy. now, like to like lean up against you on a uh, you crowded not. subway. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever see me on the subway and I get jostled too hard and it just smells <laughs> terrible, you'll you'll all know what happened. The old squid oh boy. defense. Um, what were you saying about Brexit? I don't remember. I just, I, it was weird that we brought it up and we were kind of joking about it, you know, in last week's episode on 4th of July, but it was like a week and a half after the Brexit had actually happened. So well, just this, kinda, I, we've had a few episodes weird. now where we brought something up and then it became very relevant uh, a Austin week Powers. right away. Yeah. Austin Powers. <laughs> as soon as we did our Austin Powers episode. They uh, announced the new Austin Powers trilogy. Exactly. <laughs> Which, that, that's not true. <laughs> His but, mojo uh, awakens. That's not true. But uh, we we talked about Jurassic World a couple weeks ago with Corey right, Scott. That's and true. And then right after we recorded it, the guy that did those drawings of the raptor soldiers that invade right. the castle that you guys didn't even hear of, he yeah. suddenly released all the pictures. Yeah, that so that's was, out there. That uh, was weird. There's a few other ones where we talked about it and suddenly it was a thing. Um, Guts was on, in the news a lot after, uh, for some reason, after we had mentioned the aggro crag. Right. Um, so, because uh, well, I think in, in Brooklyn they did like a Guts night somewhere where they yeah. built a replica aggro crag. And yeah. Mike O'Malley may or may not have been involved. Then we brought up the Brexit, which was, you know, only the top story in the news at the time. And then right. all of a sudden it becomes a thing. Yeah. Uh, so I think we, I think it's safe to say that the Illuminati listen to our I think podcast. That's, ex- that's absolutely and right. And they base their New World Order decisions on our, to- our but, random but topics. They're listening to it before the show even comes out. Well, they're the Illuminati. They're the Illuminati. Yeah, You're they're, right. They're they get the live feed <laughs> that doesn't exist, but they make it exist. Yeah, no, they're watching us right now. So Beyonce's listening Actually, right now. Because she's uh, the queen. You know, Big Brother, 1984, the I, novel. I have a Big Brother. The, uh, the, the TVs had cameras in them. Yes, it was that's like true. Crazy futuristic. Div- well, yeah. hey, yours does. Yeah. We have an Xbox exactly. uh, 360 most, here. I, I think most computers now and laptops have cameras in yeah, them. Yeah, my, my laptop yeah. has a camera. So You're that's right. very Big Brother. And get this. Okay. So 
in 19... You're swaying me to the idea that Big Brother is actually watching us record this podcast right now. I think now. they are, for sure. And then in 1984, uh, yeah. the entire world is split up into three different countries. Mm-hmm. One of the countries is, I think it's Oceania. I think that was the name of it. It's basically just North America and Britain. Like oh, that's man. it, and then and Europe, we, uh, the Europe continent, Eurasia is all its own thing. So you're saying so the I'm Brexit? Saying maybe they're they're floating loose right now. They got nowhere to go. They are. We bring them in. We bring we've them got, into the mix. We've got TVs watching us. Okay. We're pretty much using double speed. We're we're reducing our language. We, we don't even have, we don't even give a shit about our uh, schwas, our schwas anymore. anymore. You're I right. I feel like Orwell's 1984 is c- coming true. I think you might be right, Jack. And I Good think Lord. I think the best thing for us to do is to just suck up to the powers that be and become like those those capital people. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of the guy? I don't know. He had, the, but they had the nice apartments, and they it. don't they don't have to work in the, right. the slums. Now that Matt, uh, our guest from last week, isn't here because he was our British guest, yeah. now I, we can talk about how much we hate Britain for real. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so fitting and great if we did make? The United, all of the United uh, Kingdom, a, a colon- state, a colony, yeah, yeah, just like bring them right into statehood, fuck the colony, and just like all of a sudden it's like now who's laughing, England? I don't know if I'd call it laughing or great, but it would be fitting in the way like your parents raise you, and right, then and they then get old to and you raise parents. them. So right. England could be like our old, it's like our old relatives, relatives like, that are pooping themselves, and right. But so are well, you. So well, that's true. That's, well, that's, that's, I shouldn't have. Made that, I, I should myself for a reason. Yeah, I should have made that move. I yeah, it's, God, I, I, th- I, I got scared. What I do you re- want? I, th- I read the signs wrong. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we should probably get to our actual first topic, unless me pooping myself is a, is a topic. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the topic. So, guys, submit your topics, 90spercentile.wordpress.com. We may or may not get a real website. That's kind of uh, our, our what did you call it before? Our temporary permanent website? Our temporary, our termapemp. Termap- ter- ter- termapemp website. Per- permatemp. There we go. Permatemp. All right, guys. It's uh, like the, uh, what is that? Isn't that? The permafrost. Permafrost. That's yeah. a thing in the Arctic tundra. Yeah, I guess it's not like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's not really like that. All right, guys. So we got 48 minutes and 51 seconds on the clock, and I got our first topic right here. It's from a man named Joey Jojo Jr. No shabadoo, interestingly <laughs> That's enough. That's the worst name I've ever heard. <laughs> no, Joey Jojo, wait. And his suggestion is a classic film from 1994. It is wait. the... Uh, I, I know the it, Mask. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to guess. Yeah, that would have been good, but I already said too much. Yeah. It's The Mask. So thank you, Joey Jojo, for that suggestion. Um... The Mask. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on The Mask, Jack? only seen it once. Really? Yeah. Saw I've it, seen The Mask dozens of times. Saw it about 10 years ago. Okay. I don't remember much of it. I remember Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz. Big, her big break. Um, I guess I probably saw like the last 20 minutes of it on TV a bunch of times for some right. reason. So, so I, before before we get into all the weird little details we're going to, sure. I feel like we should explain it. I, I have a feeling sometimes we just get ahead of ourselves with topics we're very familiar with. Right. Uh, so... You want to dial it back a little Let's bit. Let's dial back. Let's dial it back. Let's imagine I have never seen The Mask. Let's imagine some of our listeners have never seen it. All right. Can you give us a brief rundown of how it works? So, the god of mischief, so Cher, Loki. Cher is in has it. Has created Christina a mask. Ricci. Right? Cher and Christina Ricci. No. Yeah. Not, right? that, not that mask. Wait, that's not the mask we're no, talking about? No, a different mask. This isn't the one about the kid with the face. Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz with yeah. the face. Yeah. This, we're not talking about that? We're not talking about that. That's not the 1994 comedy with Cameron Diaz? <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Like, I'm sure someone has put a mashup of those movies together. Yeah, I'm sure. People people are creative like that. Yeah, creative by stealing my, my idea of trailer mashups. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so The Mask, if you've never seen it, it was one of Jim Carrey's big movies. He had back-to-back-to-back hits with Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber. So The Mask was, it's based on a Dark Horse comic, which I can talk pretty well about the comic Yeah, I, wanted to, I do want to talk about the comic. Yeah, I actually uh, uh, was rereading it pretty recently, so uh, I can... Uh, let's, let's put a pin on that. We'll put a pin on that. It's about a man who uh, Jim Carrey plays. His name is Stanley Ipkiss in the movie, and he's just kind of like beaten down, kind of schlubby guy. Um, he finds this mask in the water, and like you do, you just put it on. <laughs> And when, oh, here's a piece of drift, <laughs> disgusting driftwood yeah, and that I found in the polluted city river. That's exactly right. Let me put right. it right up to my face. It is kind of weird. Uh, you've only seen it once, but I, I've seen it pretty recently, actually. It's kind of weird when he just, like, he finds this mask floating in the water, and then he takes it home for some reason. <laughs> And then he's just like looking at it, and he's just like, there's this really tense moment where he's like looking at it, like, should I put it on? Should I put it on? He goes to put it on, and he's like, maybe I shouldn't put it on. And then he does put it on, maybe, and it glues to his maybe face. Maybe it's calling to him. 
That could be it because it does have this like little green glow to yeah, it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe because like if I found something like that, obviously I would just leave it alone. I wouldn't touch right. it ever. But maybe if it was like subliminally like, no, you should think about it. Take take me home at least. There, yeah, that that could be. That's my head cannon for that. Well, I believe they don't get into it so much in the actual mask movie. I think they do get into it in Son of the Mask, which I've never <laughs> seen, and I don't think I anyone have should seen, ever see. Have, have you really? Yeah, that one you've seen dozens of times. <laughs> that one I've seen enough. dozens of times. I think they get into that one more that the mask was like the god of mischief, Loki. Not not Not, be confused with the Marvel one. Well, sort of the same. Well, they're basically the same, but he like created the mask. He's not handsome Tom Hiddleston. Right. I actually think he's played by Alan Cumming in Son of the Mask. Really? Oh, Loki's actually in it. I think he's an actual character. I really don't remember the movie. I've never seen it. I I think there's a baby mask scene. Alan Cumming is kind of perfect casting for a Loki type character. He is. Can I tell my really quick Alan Cumming story? Sure. Uh, very quick. I don't know if I said this on the, the Wii show or maybe I've said it on this he podcast. He tried to have sex with you. He tried to have he sex with me and I pooped him with diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> sprayed him with diarrhea. No, I went to see, uh, I saw Cabaret Great uh, musical. last winter and he is obviously, uh, you know, a big, big part of that show. He, uh, I think, originated the role that he plays. Well, as the, uh, he, I think he originated Joel it. Joel Grey huh? originated it in the 60s. Oh, yes, so. you're right. But you're he right. originated this new revival. revival yeah. Right, and then he came back for this next revival. Anyway, we waited outside the stage door to meet Alan Cumming, and Emma Stone was also in this production. Oh, so we you went to, to that one? Oh, I was so mad. I, I did. I went and I paid a lot of money, and she decided not to show up that night. All oh, right. I was so mad. Pinning that Emma Stone although story. The, we got a lot the, of pins yeah, to unpin the, later. Uh, the understudy was very much, much, much better. Though. I'll tell my Emma Stone story in a second, but we waited for Alan Cumming, and he was so nice. He's exhausted because it's a lot of work for him yeah. he's like the star of the show he's in every scene he's always on stage he comes out it was freezing it was the coldest night of the year uh last winter in new york he came out right away like he clearly just wanted to get it over with sign the autographs and then go back inside and kind of relax nice of him to even do that though. It, extremely nice he was he was so so gracious he was such a good sport about everything uh he came out oh, it'd I, be really funny though if he did write fuck you on every <laughs> single one <laughs> just like fuck you i you hate know, you most of them just scribble it's get like a life yeah <laughs> But um, he, he came out, and I had planned this in advance, because I knew we were going to see Alan coming. I brought my X-Men 2 Blu-ray, <laughs> and I'm holding it out, and I just said, Alan, do you mind signing this? He doesn't look at me. He doesn't move. He just goes, <sighs> just an audible <laughs> sigh as he signs it, moves on. He, we never made eye contact. What do you expect? But I appreciate that he signed it. He, yeah, but I, like he, you know, he's a very talented actor, I'm sure. Yeah. And like, you know... Nightcrawler, he's great in it. I'm pretty but sure, I'm sure I told him you were great because I always yeah. say that to everybody I meet. But at he Broadway. probably is just like, "This is what you remember before." Just like when I told uh, Oliver. But Platt, he's really I good as Nightcrawler. Oh, he's great. But yeah. he probably to him that's he probably didn't put that much effort into the role. Probably not. Well, yeah, I know he, he probably he, just like, remembers sitting in a makeup. It was chair five for hours in a makeup yeah. chair for him. Yeah. But it was tough. But X Men Two is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, but I'm, I don't have enough time to explain that to him. Yeah. Be like, I am a big X Men fan, and I yeah, really like Nightcrawler. Yeah. You were really good. Maybe you should have just had him sign some like the playbill for Cabaret, and right. while he's signing it, say, "I really liked you as Nightcrawler." Yeah. All right. You you, you elevated the movie. Although I want to Look, talk about I'm just... this before we talk about Emma Stone. Okay. I want to talk about this in general, autographs and stuff like that. Okay. Like, I, <laughs> the mask has transitioned yeah. to just stage door autographs. I, I would never. Ever, 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 ever wait behind a stage after like a behind a stage door after really? Like, it's such a waste of time because you oh, it takes so cr- forever for them to come out and uh, it doesn't take that long. Like, I'll who, tell more stage door cares? stories. Like who? Who? What's, well, uh, you get to meet uh, famous people. But you're not meeting them. They're like you're you kind said. Of you didn't them. even make eye contact with you. Well, I'll tell you this. I, I saw Hamilton uh, a few months back, right before it was like super, super huge. Uh, and I met Lin Manuel Miranda, and I said, "You oh, were I don't you like were, him at you, all." Are you kidding? Oh yeah, I've just, I've been he seeing is like it. the best. I've been seeing him on so many interviews and stuff lately, what? and he's just so fucking full of himself. I'm just like, Shut. I couldn't disagree. I'm with not you saying more. like I'm not saying his writing or anything is isn't sub is sub. Oh, he's he's you know, I mean Hamil- Hamilton is a fucking masterpiece. Obviously, he's very but, talented guy, but personality wise, I just want to smack him in the face. He and I shared a moment because I said, "Did you smack him in the face?" You were terrific, and I smacked him <laughs> right across the <laughs> eyes, and he said, "Dan, how could you?" He sprayed diarrhea all over. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a thing we share in common We bonded over that <laughs> No, I'm sure he's a very nice guy He was And I, ne- I don't like to base celebrities on their personality Since I never met them But he just seems a little All I gotta say, so I gotta say is He was equally as tired as Alan Cumming must have been And he and I made a eye contact And he said thank you Did you, you. have him sign an X- <laughs> X2 uh, no, DVD? He, he signed my playbill But I, had, <laughs> I should have had him sign an X2, X2 DVD. DVD And he would just be like <laughs> Another one. That would have been amazing. I should have gotten him to sign. Um, oh, he a was ten dollar bill. No, yeah, that would have made sense. No, he was on some terrible show. I want to say he was on the show Do No Harm, 
with the guy from really? Rescue Me that was like based off Dr. Yeah, Jekyll yeah. and Mr. Oh, Hyde. He, he's been a TV actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say he was one of his friends on the show. It would have been great if I had a DVD, DVD of, of that. Do no harm. <laughs> Sign that. I feel like that would be the equivalent of what I did to Alan. That would have been really funny, actually. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, so you meet him. He was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Auto- no, he was I, I just think autographs. Is, like, what do you do with them when you get I couldn't the, disagree with you more. I think it's awesome. The only time I could maybe appreciate an autograph as if it's on like a poster or something that I'm going to hang up. Right. But in terms of like an autograph book or something like that, I just have zero. Yeah, like I used to do it. Yeah. And I threw them all out. I just, I, well, who cares? Just I mean, like, here's the thing. Like we, people. We did get, you know, Lynn signed my Hamilton playbill and so did um, Jonathan Groff. I don't know if we got anybody else. Uh, but we just have it's just sitting on my wife's night yeah, table. Just like it's, <laughs> it's just uh, sitting there. And like you have to wait, like you for Alan Cumming. Who uh, look, I love Cabaret. I love Alan Cumming. Yeah. But you said it's the coldest night of the year. Okay. That's the so, last place I would want to be is just like waiting out there for him. So let's unpin the Emma Stone okay. story. I'm gonna throw a little shade at Emma Stone. Okay. Actually, we're gonna get real. Okay. Not not Nick Noga levels. I already threw shade at her because she should have fucking showed up for the Cabaret that I my girlfriend was right. very excited to see her. Yeah. So this was the legit coldest night of the year. It was like January. It was like literally negative six outside in New York. Alan like Cumming came out right away at Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I don't know how much of a difference that is, but it was I feel like that's much colder. Kelvin, which is six degrees colder than possible. It was absolute possible. zero. So no one was moving and all heat death had stopped. <laughs> Except your, your diarrhea <laughs> Except my diarrhea. That's the only <laughs> my diarrhea defeats absolute <laughs> zero. It starts the new Big Bang. Absolutely. That's how, that's that's, how the universe that's how that, works. That's, <laughs> The, that's how it we happens. Get, we get the big, what is it, the big freeze. Right. Uh, the big uh, crunch. You uh, you release your ink. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, then that and forms a new bubble universe, a new universe and it starts all over again. That's right. I that's think that they may, might be giants singing that into a song. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely did. And then Dan Butt releases. <laughs> no, keep going with your They Might Be Giants song, please. And then Dan Butt releases a bunch of stinky poo. <laughs> and then that stinky poo <laughs> becomes me and you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You saved it at the end there. That was great. No, uh, here's my Emma Stone story, and then we'll get back to talking about the mask. I don't honestly don't remember how we got <laughs> we, talking about we this. We got time. Uh, so Emma Stone uh, was the star of Cabaret. Like you know, this was uh, I saw this just after the Oscar nominations were announced. And I she saw was nominated it just before, for Birdman, and I think I think she. I was worried she wasn't going to show up because the Oscars were that weekend or something. Right. Or is that something different? Ah, I don't know. So my, uh, I was there with my wife, my sister-in-law, my wife, and my uh, my brother-in-law. And my sister-in-law is nuts about this stuff. Like she has to wait. So you you would not be compatible theater goers. <laughs> like she always wants to wait, and she definitely wanted to meet Emma Stone. So she's like, we have to meet Emma Stone. Like this is amazing. We have to Why? see her. Who cares? You know, I was always kind of indifferent on Emma Stone. I kind of liked her. Now I'm not a fan after this story, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I don't care that much. Like, I'll right. stick around for Alan Cumming because i got to get that X-Men 2 DVD right, signed. Right, right. But anyway, uh, we're waiting, and Alan Cumming came out right away. A bunch of the other cast members come out, and then there's just, like, silence. Like, people stop coming out. An hour passes. Okay, and, like, people are dwindling away because it's fucking freezing. It's the middle I, of the I, night. I, I can't relate to this story at all. An no. hour? I would yeah. wait. I would have waited 60 seconds. It was, yeah, an hour passes, and nothing, nothing's happening. People are slowly dying off. People are checking her Twitter to see if she's, like, tweeting at all. Nothing is happening. Every time the door do opens... Do they take pictures, or they, will they only do signings? It depends. Some people will take pictures. Um, I could maybe see getting a picture, because then you can show it off on social media. Right, 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 right. I, th- I feel like I do have a picture with Lynn, but I don't know anymore. Oh, you're on first name basis now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Linny MMs. That's what I call them. <laughs> M&Ms? M&Ms. Yeah. We share M&Ms and then we diarrhea them out. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like you do with Broadway <laughs> sensations. I, I believe I saw him do a very teary-eyed speech about that. At, a- on absolutely. Some, at, some at the Tony Awards. Press conference, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, another hour passes. So it has been two hours and Emma Stone finally comes out. It is like 1230 at night. It's Everyone is freezing. It's just like the really hardcore crazy people, and un- unfortunately me. Uh, and she just comes out, and she's just like, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So she has to go out this door. She can't avoid you people. Yeah, I think, I, th- I don't know what the hell she's doing. It's not like doing. a real celebrity. Yet. But she, she comes out. She, like, won't really do anything. She signed a few playbills. I don't know if she even signed one of ours. Would not take any pictures. And then she was just like, I'm sorry. I got to go. I'm sorry. And then she just got in a car and left. That's why you're mad at her? Yeah. She's right. No, she's not. You, you come you out. You weirdos shouldn't be waiting out there for... She's you, working her hey man, ass off. Hey, man. 
we are the fans, and we demand it, okay? If we did this podcast live and our fans wanted to meet us, I would spray them all with diarrhea and leave because I'm a bad person like Emma well, Stone is a bad person. We're not famous, and we would be very appreciative of anybody to do that. We're not. But can you imagine? We're it? not not famous. All right, what if we had done... 120 live 90s percentiles, one a night in a row. It's fucking freezing. You're exhausted. Not only that, not I'm, only that, but you we had to do rehearsal for the 90s percentile. 90s percentile was three hours long. I'm out there. I'm out there. I'm signing autographs. I'm taking pictures with you guys. If we ever do a live show, I will stay there until the last person has gotten you're right. their, if po- I, their photo. If I was famous, I would try to be cool like that, but I would also try to be like, look, don't wait for me. I, if you're going to be there, fine. You, you earned yeah. it, but... You don't, I'm just, like, you ever watch that documentary about John Lennon? No. All right, so they followed him, like, the last year of his life. That was camera crew. It was a very, very cool story. Okay. Uh, and there's a really imp- crazy moment where, uh, I can't remember the name. Is it the People versus John Lennon? I don't remember the name of the, the movie. Right. Um, uh, <clears throat> so there's a, there's a moment. It's really cool. He's in his mansion. I think it's upstate New York somewhere. I don't know. Okay. It's a beautiful compound. Uh, and, like, a hippie. He's like just probably like late seventies, but he's clearly like a hippie guy, yeah. uh, homeless. I don't know, but he's just, he totally like long hair and like uh, sketchy. That, looking. I think that is John Lennon, yeah. Jack. So he show, so he shows up on the compound. Security is like, there's a guy on the compound, and he's in the kitchen with his kids, like young Julian or whatever. Yeah, uh, and uh, they're like, oh, should we should we get rid of him, sir? And he's like, uh, uh, hold on, and he come, he's like, come let's let him inside. Yeah, he's like, let, let's let him inside, and, and he comes in, and they sit at his breakfast at his kitchen counter, his island. Yeah, and he's just like, what do you do? Why are you here? I mean, I wouldn't do that because the guy's clearly a nut job. Well, John Lennon's John Lennon. That's true. So, so he's like, why are you, why He also are you did here? get shot by a nut job, yeah. but hey, yeah. no, that's fine. Yeah, well, that's true too. And he's like, why are you here? And the guy's like, you're just amazing. You, 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 you know, you've just, you, you know, you've, you've inspired me. You just, you're incredible. And he's just right. like, look at me. Look, I'm just a guy. That's yeah. what he's saying to me. He's like, look, I'm just a guy. Like, it's just a guy. You don't. What, what are you getting out of this? And like, look. Yes, if I got to have a conversation with John Lennon, I think John Lennon's understating it a little bit. But the point, well, the point is yeah. where he's just like, you know, what, who cares? So, uh, so more people know who I am than you. So if I would, if we were famous and we had live show, I mm-hmm. would go ahead of time. I would go. Uh, you don't have to wait for me. Like I appreciate it, but I, well, I think it's a, I think it's something to be said when someone is an artist and creates something that you identify with that you want to kind of meet them oh, and 100%. express express you know. Well, okay. That's why, that's why I always like like meeting the, the people in Broadway shows and being like, oh, they're just they're just regular yeah. people, and I can tell them like, you were great tonight. Like yeah. this was this was not phenomenal. You could tweet at them though. You could say you were great. I don't. I know tweet. it's not the same. I don't tweet. I know it's not the same. Yeah. But yeah, it is nice for you to express it. But other than that, the only interaction I would have with my idols and my heroes, right? I feel like would be superficial if it was like that. I would love. I would. Love to have like a conversation with somebody that I would get a you know obviously I'm a conversationalist that's, right so I, that's what that, we do here that would be really cool if you told me if I waited outside in the freezing cold for an hour and Alan Cumming would come out and talk to me for 15 minutes just shoot the shit yeah of course I'd wait but right. but in terms of just here's a sign this here you know here's this you know like I I see a lot of celebrities in the city all the time you yeah know, if you live in New York it's just they're they're it's they're what you around. do I've never it's it's what you do it's what you do um, I'm sure L A maybe maybe it's less so ju- in L A you just reminded me of several stories I want to tell but continue <laughs> yeah. maybe it's less so in L A because everybody drives around uh, yeah even though I'm sure there's more celebrities per normal people ratio right but yeah I see celebrities all the time just walking around uh, last summer I was waiting at a traffic light with Bruce Willis Bruce Willis one of my favorite, uh, I don't want to say actors, but one of my favorite celebrities <laughs> of all One of my favorite guys. Yeah, one of my favorite celebrities of all time. And he's just standing right next to me. Yeah. And I've been in this situation. That's pretty awesome. A couple, Bruce a good uh, yeah, one. I've been in this situation a couple dozen times where I'm just right there. I never say anything. It's because I don't want to bother them. I'm be like, hey, I'm a big fan. The only time I would ever do that was if I was already talking to them about something, like right. whether I was serving them coffee as a barista or mm-hmm. if they had asked me a question, like, uh, do you know uh, where this so-and-so is? I would go, eh, it's up this street, make a left. By the way, big fan. Something yeah. like that. But I would I would love to have a conversation with Bruce Willis and be like, hey, blah, 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 I love Die Hard. Uh, you know, you remind me of my uncle. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, just have a conversation. But for me to just bother him just to say, hey, hi, I'm a big fan, I, I just... I don't know. It seems I, it depends. The context it's dependent on context, I guess. On the street, like maybe just be like, "Hey, big fan," and that's it. And you know, you don't, I don't drag him into he a wants conversation. That, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like if I, I don't, were like, when you're walking to the bathroom at work, yeah. Do you want somebody to stop you and just say hi when, like, if it's the superficial small talk or the superficial nod? It's like, why bother? Right, I it's it's tough because when you're celebrity, you kind of lose all your anonymity, and like anyone can just come Here, up to you I'll, on the street. I'll personalize even more. Okay. You ever get like a nice haircut? 
Yeah, I got one yesterday. Okay. Thanks for noticing, Jack. So somebody, so you come into the office, everybody goes, "Hey, great haircut!" Yeah. After like the fourth or fifth time, are you right, like, you're like, like oh, God. Stop. yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. you appreciate that people like your haircut, but right. you just don't want you, you don't want to hear it. So imagine you're Bruce Willis, and everybody in the world is going, "Hey, uh, nice diehard," you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Like it, well, to be fair, it was a nice diehard. So even if you even if you're stopping at a red, red uh, a corner with him, waiting for the green the light to change, right? You even you just simply for you, it's very simply going, "Hey, I'm a big fan." To okay. him, uh, he probably doesn't want to hear it. I hear you. Can I tell you kind of a, a flip side version sure. of that story? So one Bruce Willis told you one day, nice Bruce, haircut. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. And I was like, "Oh my god, he doesn't even have hair." <laughs> What a great thing for him to say. No, uh, I was in, this was when I was, when I was in law school. I was with my friends. We were going to get lunch. Uh, and we're walking down the street on uh, Fifth Avenue somewhere. And we're standing, waiting for the light to change, waiting across the street. And somebody's next to us. And it was uh, Jack McBrayer, who played uh, Kenneth on yeah. 30 Rock. And we're all kind of looking at him. And like we recognized him. I think 30 Rock was in its second or third season like it was just getting like really really popular, big yeah. getting really popular yeah and we're kind of all muttering to each other being like is that, is that the kind of oh that makes him feel so uncomfortable don't so do what that he, did, he started like smiling and like looked back at us and like he was kind of waiting for us to say something yeah. to him and we never did oh. i feel bad about it because i love him he's, he's phenomenal that's the other thing is it's hard to tell who actually likes that stuff and, that that yeah. is the other thing you're um, right i i was uh when I was a barista, the most, most celebrities I, I ever met. I can met. picture his face so well in my mind of him just like turning back like a half little turn and being like, are they going to say something? <laughs> the most celebrities I ever met was as a barista in uh, yeah, I'm downtown sure. Manhattan. And I was cleaning up. It was a late night. The cafe was pretty much getting ready to close and I was like mopping. Yeah. Uh, and um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Abed from Community. Uh, Danny Pudi. Danny Pudi. He comes in just to use the bathroom. Maybe That's he awesome. Maybe he grabbed a coffee. Yeah. And... We see, like, I see him and two customers, a couple see them go into the bathroom. Okay. And now he's in the bathroom. And I see them talk. Oh, that's, I think that's, and like, she's, one of them is explaining to the others, like, yeah, community, Abbott. Yeah. Ab he so was I in see the that. Winter Soldier. So, he was one of the tech guys. Uh, yeah. So I'm a big fan of his. I was a huge fan of community. Of course. And again, like with Jack McBrayer, it's like, he's not super famous. He probably would appreciate somebody. But I could also tell that he was just not in the mood. He's, he's trying to be. Well, he clearly had to go take a shit or yeah, something. Exactly. So, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to, as much as I really want to say something, I'm not going to, unless. He comes right up. I was like, I actually planned it. I was like, all right, I'll hang out by the exit, and if he comes up to me, I'll say, hey, nice. You know, I, even I had the impulse to say, like, hey, right. I'm a big fan. Yeah. So he comes out, and they just ambush him, and they're like, hey, are you, uh, are you Abed? They didn't even know his fucking name, oh. which I guess I didn't either. I, but, always, I always hate that. Yeah. yeah. Are you I, Abed from Community? Then they ask him, and he's like, yeah, and they follow him out, and they walk away with him, and I was like, oh, right. I don't like that. Yeah, and it's just like, at least I would have been better about it. As they, they like, not only did. I not get to say hi to him, yeah. but that these people kind of co-opted it and made it much worse. So that made me like doubly upset. So that's right. why I feel like we should all just be in agreement and be like, just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. I, um, oh man, I'm thinking of like so many celebrity meeting stories. We that should I had. save the, the uh, ones not directly connected to, to, uh, to the mask, <laughs> well, to, uh, whether they like it or not, just right. because I'm sure this is going to come up time and time again. On Probably the podcast. I'll, uh, just one more. One I more. met, I met, um, Jason Manzuka at Comic-Con, because uh, I went to a panel for uh, NTSF, SV, whatever the hell the yeah, Paul yeah. Shear show was. Uh, and Paul Shear was really nice. I asked a question in the panel, and it was, it was whatever. I kind of I crumbled a little bit when I was in that big spotlight. But uh, I, I mentioned, like, is Jason Manzoukas going to be on the show at any point? And he was like, why don't you ask him yourself? He's right over there. And like, they sh he was just like in the audience. He wasn't on the panel. That's cool. And I was like, holy shit, I got to go say hi to him after, after the panel. And so I did, and I was like, hey, I'm the guy that asked about you. I just wanted to say I'm a big fan. Like, you're great. And he was like, oh, great. Thanks so much. And I was like, can I get a picture? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he was just like the nicest guy. And yeah. I have this picture of him just looking very dazed and, and, and also confused. He's probably stoned. Poss um, possibly stoned. Yeah, it's tough to tell with the, everything I just said. Uh, about yeah, and I'm my gawky and self, and he's just like It's tough to tell with looking these, like these, him. the smaller celebrities who are just breaking out because right. it probably does have, it probably still is a lot of fun. But yeah. again, I'm not even famous, and it is fun for people to tell me I have a nice haircut. But eventually, you just get sick of it. You're just like, yeah. I just leave me alone. This is this is adding nothing to the to the day. Right. This is just you know. I'm possibly experiencing this in Japan while I'm while we're not while this is we being. We do have released. a very big Japanese fan base. Well, no, no. <laughs> Supposedly, this is what I've read. Uh, Westerners who travel to Japan, they don't see a lot of people who look like me. Like I'm a I'm a tall person. I have light hair. I'm gonna stick out in Japan, and a lot of Japanese people who've never been to 
America or never seen like but, Americans. But you're not the only tourist, right? No. But, well, we are going to some small towns, and I've been told like people are going to want to take photos. How did you with hear me. of the small towns from a travel agency? Uh, no, they're like they're, they're like noted small towns, but you know who knows? Who, I don't know who we're going to. I feel run like into. they're going to. They've seen a lot of Americans. Before. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you guys know right. uh, next week. That seems a little silly. I will see. We'll find out. Who is this tall Adonis? <laughs> I mean, I did get a new haircut. <laughs> and I hope they all compliment it. Is it is the ink sprayer. <laughs> <laughs> the one who defeats Godzilla. <laughs> I tried to avoid the, the accent. <laughs> I was try- you know, I, I recognized as soon as I did it, I probably shouldn't have done that. So maybe just beep all that out. Or just leave it in. I don't know. Leave it in. Whatever. I didn't mean any offense. I, I love Japan. But yeah, so uh, to sum up my point, I just, I, f- I don't know. I feel like autographs... It's like, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not just saying. Oh, celebrities are, are no different from us. Of course, they're different, and right. there there are idols in specific cases. If if they're just you're trying to get a picture just because they're famous, you don't even know what the fuck their fucking name is. That's right. different. But I I just feel like it would have to be a more meaningful interaction for it to be worth anything. Signing a piece of paper does nothing for me. Fair enough. I, I, uh, I and the idea of well, waiting outside even... for them, and it seems, and then they have to feel obligated. Like it's very nice of Alan Cumming to do it, but yeah. you're you're just, you're. Making him miserable. <laughs> but it's more, it's not even just getting his autograph. I like the, the fact that I have his autograph, but it's the story of like how I met Alan right. Cumming and now I can tell people about that and I do. And, it's, and but uh, now it's been on to, my podcast. That story is fun for you. Right. But it had But to, you're saying it was it, horribly it, boring it, for you and the listeners. It needed Alan Cumming suffering for it to even be a story. The I'm joke okay is, with that. The joke is that he didn't even have the, the energy to make <laughs> eye contact and then yeah. he went, Ugh. Like, I don't want to be Alan Cumming in that story. <laughs> Well, like he, he just he worked his ass off to put on an incredible performance for you, and now he also has to come out. Look, if Alan Cumming is listening, I greatly appreciate it, Alan. All right? That's all no, I'm trying to say. I, I, I'm glad they should be appreciated, especially when they go out of their way to do something like that. But we yeah. shouldn't have to add that on to their already amazing performance. I'm going to dial it back. Because we only have 24 minutes right. and 50 seconds left. Let's talk about the mask. You think Jim Carrey would be cool in person? That's what I was actually going to ask you. Like, I don't know. I could be. I wouldn't be surprised either way if he was like a total dick or if he was totally nice. I think he is. His I reputation bet you it depends on his mood. Yeah, his reputation is that he's pretty weird in person, and I, he's he, he strikes me as the type of guy who's a little bit in his own head and maybe goes through some depressive bouts yeah. and kind of like I don't know if if you know what you're going to get I believe when you meet the, Jim Carrey. Uh, the medical term is a nutcase. I'm, well, I was trying to avoid <laughs> anything like that. Mental health is a big problem. Uh, yeah, they're all we nuts. hope he's okay. They're all they're all nutsos. <laughs> put put him in a rubber room. Am oh, I right? Oh boy, I don't I don't want to sign off on any of that. Uh, but I bet Jim Carrey, if you catch him at the right time, would be a great guy to meet. I don't know if he would work so well as someone you meet on the street, but I feel like if he was at like a Comic Con or something where you could meet him, he would be like the nicest guy. I feel like because uh, and he uh, would tell you not to get vaccines, I, which I don't like. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, f- I feel like because he's probably a nutso. Um, <laughs> he doesn't like he doesn't believe yeah, in vaccines. I, I use that term because uh, I feel like I don't. Uh, I'm neurotic and I'm introverted. Yeah. I don't. I doubt I have the exact same whatever disorders he does, mm-hmm. but. I bet you we have something in common in that we're very moody and that basically you, your interaction with him would be completely di- different depending on just what mood he's in. Yeah. And he could be totally gracious and totally fun, whether it's at a Comic-Con or on the street, or he could just be not in the fucking mood and he's just like right. not giving you... A, and like, just blow you off it, yeah, or something. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I could see that. Um, so the mask. So let's talk specifically about the mask. We never even talked about what happens once he puts the mask on. Oh, all of this is related to what happens <laughs> when he puts the mask on. He, he c- goes and signs out. He waits yeah. outside stage doors. <laughs> That's exactly right. Somebody sign this! <laughs> He puts the mask on, and the mask is kind of imbued with this magic energy. He gets a big green face, and he becomes basically a living cartoon character. I think the explanation is it makes your inner self uh, your outer self. And so inside, he's, uh, he's like I a see. big animation guy, and he like wishes he was this outgoing, gregarious guy. So he becomes this like living cartoon. Yeah. And then later on in the movie, the bad guy puts it on, and he becomes this like hulking monster right, type right, thing. Right. Um, so it kind of makes you... Who you yeah. wish you and were. And the movie was very popular, both it because Jim Carrey had exploded. Also, it was one of the first big CGI movies. Yes, a lot, a lot of CGI. Of, uh, and basically, it embodied a very specific, like, Looney Tunes, Max Fleischer type of... More, he, more, be, more basi- like Tex Avery, I would say. Tex Avery. The, like, the wolf. Be, basically, he grew up watching those, so that's yeah. that's what he becomes. Exactly. So a lot of his mannerisms are, like you said, like the Tex Avery wolf. His eyes bu- bulge out. And, right. Yep. Uh, so it's, Heart it's, beating it, out it's, of his chest. It's, and because CGI was a very new thing to movies, it was basically 
like seeing a live action cartoon for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. It uh, was. And, um, and was I think it, that's why it was very popular. Yeah. I, I agree. And I think just America just had this love affair with Jim Carrey. Where I is think, it a good movie? Is it, see, I remember I watched it. Well, after it came out, I watched it in college or something, and right. I remember thinking, I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan, huge yeah. Jim Carrey fan, and as much as I liked him and his little moments, I was just, and I love Tex Avery, and I love Looney Tunes, I love, the idea of a human cartoon is great, mm-hmm. the movie itself is just like, eh. Uh, I would say it has its moments, I think nostalgia colors it more for people our age, like it's definitely, I think it was rated PG-13, but it's like, it's a kid's movie, like it's a movie that is for teenagers who were... Teenagers when it came out. People who think it's funny to make diarrhea rape jokes. Yeah, basically. Like real immature. Dumb dumbs like that. Yeah. Um, Like if you've never seen The Mask, I probably wouldn't say go out and rent it. I don't know that well, it holds up. Uh, who, who goes out and rents anything? Okay, I, w- I wouldn't stay. <laughs> are, you, are, are you saying don't get in the car and drive to your local Hollywood video? Yeah, I thought that's what everyone does. Pick up a beta of. Uh, the mask. <laughs> I still use Betamax. Is that not? <laughs> is that not cool? Am I an old? You're an old. Oh man, I knew it. <laughs> um, you need beta blockers. <laughs> That's some kind of cancer. It's something. Or it's an old thing. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, uh, what else is about? All right, the so mask? I want to talk about the comic. Uh, okay. So sure. I never read the comic, the Dark you know Horse what? comic. Joey Jojo never specified if he meant the movie or the comic. Maybe or, he meant or the, the share Eric Stoltz. Or the, <laughs> well, that's just mask, I believe. Well, I think he was saying the mask, like people say the Netflix. Right, you're right. <laughs> or the internet. <laughs> old say that. Yeah. I think. I think he's an old who wanted us to talk about the share. I think movie. you might be right. But, okay. Um, sorry, we're going to talk about the comic. Uh, talk about the comic. I never sure. read the comic, but I read the comic. And this is actually, I've read this uh, several times before I'd ever yeah. seen, years before I'd ever seen the movie. So mm-hmm. I was still in junior high, and a friend of mine lent it to me, and I kept it for months. It was The Mask Returns. It was a direct sequel. Correct. But I think it was a sequel maybe to the movie as well as the comic. Well, I think when, uh, so the comic came out before the movie, obviously. All right, well, so here's what I wanted to say about the, the sure. second, and you can talk about it in the first. It's very, very violent and dark. Yes. Basically, he's not just a car- he's not a cartoon character. He's a serial killer, and he's shooting and killing people and stabbing people, and there's blood. And guts it's everywhere. a lot less lighthearted. Although there is that part in the mask where he shoves mufflers up the buttholes of his <laughs> mechanics. I don't remember that. It's kind of it's kind of weird, actually, especially <laughs> when you think about it. It's like, oh, he just like probably killed those guys <laughs> like by shoving something right up their butts. <laughs> but no, the comic uh, uh, to say it's much darker. Yeah, that is, actually uh, that, ha- that happens in the comic. He, he like splits people in half. It's very gory and graphic and graphic. <laughs> God. I'm not going to say no, anything if you listen to, to our listen to Simpsons, Simpsons podcast. Groupic is a thing. 9-11 never happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, the movie version is definitely, they toned it down for Hollywood, I would say. The, 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 the comic, I'd say it's completely different. I would say it's not a toned down. It's a different tone completely. They, they basically took the concept and just did a different genre with he's it. He's much more, he's still very like cartoony, uh, yeah. but much more over the top and violent and kind of nihilistic. I guess nihilistic. the comic is more if- Looney Tunes was a real thing. Yeah, people would be horribly killed if Bugs Bunny hit you right. with a mallet. Your face would cave in. Yeah, exactly. Which is a, actually a cooler Which, idea. Yeah, and that's basically what the the mask, the first storyline was. The comic. Um, the comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think uh, the guy who gets the mask, his name is also Stanley Ipkiss. I think he dies. Spoilers for like a thirty year old comic. He dies at the end of it, and then the mask returns. If I remember right, it's either a gang member picks it up or the cop who was fighting the mask picks it up and tries to use it for good with mixed results. Um, yeah, it's worth worth reading for sure. Yeah, I'm There just... is definitely one where the Joker gets the mask, which I have not oh read. Oh, my God. Is Dark Horse related to DC? No, it was just a, it was a, like the mask Batman crossover comic. That would be awesome. I've not read that I one. I guess it would just be the Joker with superpowers. Yeah, basically. I'm um, looking at the art. The art's very cool. Yeah, it, that it, that right there is the cover to the uh, the the mask. This one right here. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That this just says Jwampy M Ortega. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, no, I, was, I don't know why I'm looking at images. I wanted with to Google see, image search the mask returns. Yeah, I wanted to see what it was about. Oh, October ninety two. So mask returns came out before the movie. Yeah, but they definitely did. You know, they, Dark Horse did a number of mask comics uh, after the the movie, obviously to cash in on its success. That I think they toned it down a lot. At one point, I think they did an anthology comic that was just different people picking up the mask, and it was a little more lighthearted. Man, the mask wiki, uh, not very uh, in depth. There's a whole mask wiki. It's <laughs> yeah, that's what like was, two that, pages. That's what I found the movie myself. and the comic. <laughs> that's it. It had 243 articles. Too. All right. Well. 
<laughs> the dog got his own. <laughs> Milo the dog well, yeah, got the, his own. The uh, dog thing. got the mask at some point too. The dog right? definitely got the mask. I would say that is the most CG part of the movie. Do you he think he got like a big face so and he's the, like at, so at the end of the movie Jim yeah. Carrey realizes this thing is too powerful uh, to be trusted with anybody, so he throws it back in the river. Correct. Uh, and then his like dopey friend goes, "What are you? Are you nuts? Well, that's awesome!" Let me. And he jumps in the water to go get it. And it's, right. And, and so does the dog. And yeah. then the dopey friend is fighting with the dog yeah, over the yeah. mask. Both of now, those people and animals if found, long dead. If you found the most <laughs> Richard Jenny, not who, alive anymore. Who, who, what did else did he play? Richard Jenny was a he was a stand up comic. Platypus Man was his show on UPN, I think. Wow, I don't I, I remember I, the. Face. I believe he killed himself in oh. the in the two thousands. So sorry to be I a downer. Gave him the mask. He was good. I really liked Richard Jenny. Uh, the dog killed itself as well. Well, the dog is clearly dead because <laughs> this movie was filmed in nineteen ninety three, and dogs do not live for thirty uh, years. Some small dogs. Some small, some small dogs. Wait, he's ninety three. Thirty. Yeah, twenty years. Twenty three years. I, I rounded up. He could be twenty five. He could be, I guess. <laughs> if you're the dog from the mask, write let in and know. let us know that you're a okay <laughs> with your dying wolf. <laughs> with your dog. There you go. Um, no, if you found a super powerful artifact like that and you yeah. realized uh, you couldn't be trusted with it, would you just throw it in the water? No. Would you come I, up with some kind of better uh, lockbox? I mean, uh, <laughs> right. I think in the comic, actually, like I said, there's a cop who gets it, and if I remember, if I'm remembering this right, he buries it in his basement and pours concrete over it, so he kn- so he has it yeah. and he knows where Although it is. Somebody's gonna even find that. Well, he he eventually digs it up to like <laughs> beat up some mobster or, or something. Makes sense. How how if you really had to get make something disappear? Okay. How would you do it? Are we talking about a body or are we talking about a, a magical mask? Well, it, Very it, different maybe answers. Maybe that of acid would work for a mask. It does certainly works for my bodies. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, if I had to get rid of something, I don't know. I think I would I just flush it, it down the, the toilet. I'd flush something down the toilet. It's gonna, somebody's going to find Worked it. Worked for those alligators that I had <laughs> you're gonna create. Toilet. You're going to create a mask gator. I get, oh, you're right. That's a, that's a good word. Or a mask rat. A, no a mask rat? A m- musk rat? <laughs> Um, I put it in the fr- I feel like I put it in the back of the freezer. I guess that's a that's a pretty good place where where things go to die. Yeah, I guess if well, you once something's in the back of the freezer, it never makes it out until you throw that freezer out. Maybe you could sew it inside your own body. I guess you could. But do then that. when you when you're buried, it's uh, I always feel like it's some everything turns up eventually. Everything turns up eventually. It's true. The body, the, the sun, diarrhea. I guess put it in the sun. You could throw it into the sun. That's something that Superman has done on occasion. <laughs> But how do you get it up there? Well, if you're Superman, it's easier. Yeah, no, if you you reject. I would love to see a Superman mask crossover. Ooh. What does Superman become when he wears the mask? So it he's already out, pretty super. It brings out your inner desires. I wonder if he would lose his powers, like he his inner because desires to just be a normal be man. A normal guy. Yeah, that's a good know. question. Maybe he becomes Batman. Maybe he becomes Batman. I'm Google very quickly Superman mask. See if okay. that actually exists. I, I don't like think that's think a very exists, ripe but... comic for crossovers. Yeah, oh, no. you're just saying just the idea of okay. So a bunch of <laughs> Superman masks came up when you googled Superman mask. I guess we should have expected that. Um, yeah, the, I don't know the concept of the mask. It definitely lends itself to like an anthology series type thing. And they and I said as I said they did do that. But um, yeah, there's the Joker mask comic, which I really should read. <laughs> Very cartoon Batman there. Um. Yeah, I don't see any Superman. This isn't exciting for a visual podcast, <laughs> or for an audio podcast. I mean, yeah, I give up. I do remember there's a picture there of the mask oh, and, the... and Ace Ventura crossover. So I did watch the mask cartoon. Yeah, on Saturday mornings. So it's funny. Um, Jim Carrey had three big breakout hits: Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber. All three of them got animated series. Dumb and Dumber too. Yeah. Very kind of weird. I don't. I, I vaguely remember them. I don't think any of them were any good. I never watched Ace Ventura's cartoon very I often. I definitely watched all three of them. But I did watch the mask one a lot, actually. Yeah. What is this? There's an image here of the Joker as Iron Man. I don't know what that is. Where's that? It was uh, on the upper left there. Uh, this is very exciting is here. Is that a crossover? The Joker versus Iron Man. The, but clown he's, prince, he's... the clown prince of iron. Huh? Is this real? I'm sure it is. What's this say? 1960? 1970? I don't think this is real because I've I've read all of the crossovers it's, between DC and Marvel. It's on Pinterest, so if it's on it, Pinterest. It, it must be true. Must be real. What did I want to look up very quickly? Oh yeah. Um, huh. Uh, I don't know, but we are uh, November. I can't tell. Failing in our good podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can tell. I can tell more stories of meeting celebrities. We'll tell a quick one. I want to look something up. I was in the elevator with Stephen King once. 
That's he is, awesome. He is very tall. Yeah. That's awesome. And no, he, he seems like a cool guy who would just shoot the shit. Absolutely. I, I worked uh, I worked at Simon & Schuster, his publisher at the time, and I was in the elevator with the CEO of the company, who I actually did know, because I worked... Uh, it's not important why I know him, but uh, he was in the elevator with Stephen King, and I was just kind of awestruck. I was just like, oh, that's Stephen King. Yeah, what do I say? That, that would be a big and so one I, 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 I like froze. I didn't say anything. But a uh, very tall man. I'm yeah. tall, and he's a lot taller. That would be a very big one for me. I, uh, I'm trying to think. So I guess b- most of the celebrities I've met, the re- you know, I'm very like, ah, I wouldn't say anything. It's because they haven't been big ones. Although I have seen like Rob Williams, Bruce Willis, and I, again, I didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, I, the, one of the most starstruck I did get, though, was with uh, uh, John Benjamin. Uh, and I was, yeah, I was that's, making, a, that's a good one. Yeah, and I was making him a coffee, and I just had to say something. So while I'm making it, and the girl that I work, my boss is ringing her up, mm-hmm. ringing him up. I go, by the way, uh, I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan. Huge. I, I said it twice to like really. I wanted to, to reiterate. Con- how I wanted huge. to convey that like, no, 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 I'm a really big fan. Right. And, and my boss just turns around and goes, huge fan of what? <laughs> oh. And I was like, poor yeah, Johnny Benz. Yeah, yeah. This Coach McGurk, you, you <laughs> dumb idiot. <laughs> Um, all right, so I just wanted a really quick. Oh, this is the intro. Oh, god damn it! What is this? Oh, this is the intro. I like that you brought up the Ace Ventura yeah, animated no, series. Yeah, uh, no, the mask one is pretty straightforward. Oh, here's the crossover. You must be one and the same. Besides, my monkey's got photos. This is some kind of. So this is the animated mask and Ace Ventura crossover. It's yeah. called the Ace Man Cometh. <laughs> They did not get Jim Carrey to reprise any of the voices. Yeah, that you voice is terrible. To stop me, mask. Is that Tim Curry? You see, with the help of it does sound like Tim Curry. Brain, I, stole I don't think it is, this satellite bugs made I don't know what any of this is. Mars? I don't think so. That, that, none, of, none of this seems good. Okay, I don't know what that is. There's an alien with one eye. I don't know what's going on. That imitation Ace Ventura voice, yeesh. It's pretty bad. I mean, yeah. it's better than I could do, but... Uh, all righty then. <laughs> nah, that was good. mine. Nah, that was pretty great, I think. <laughs> uh, ten minutes. What, what, what do you want to do? Oh, man, I don't even know. Do you want to talk about Cameron Diaz for a little bit? We haven't really mentioned her. That this was, was her that breakout was, role. Was it her? I know it was her she first. She was a model, I believe, yeah. before this. She may was, not have even acted before this It was this her movie. first big film. Well, she was, she, there was her first big film role, but was it her? Is, was it her that wasn't her breakout role, right? That wasn't what know, made her a name. It, no, it was definitely her breakout. In terms of her career, I don't think it's anybody it made her more recognizable i don't think people knew who she was until there's something about no, mary this, this was her first movie no i get that but i don't think it was a breakout role i don't think everybody's like wow did you see that new star cameron diaz um i, I think i, don't I know. remember just thinking like oh i guess I, I maybe you realize right. that was cameron diaz in the mask because well, she was in like my best friend's wedding and well that uh, was after that she was, broke out that no that was before oh no you're about right mary. you're right that was before this there's something about mary um right. she uh I guess you're right. There's something about Mary was 98. That was and that when was she kind became of, an A-list star. That's when she was a household name, I guess. That's funny because it's it's always funny to realize, like, well, with retrospect, yeah. when like there's a big movie star, how quickly a lot of their big movie, like how quickly they became just burned into your mind. So, like, let's say 98, she did become a big A-list star. Yeah. I remember thinking in 99, when Being John Malkovich came out, I mm-hmm. was like, wow, this is really against type for her. Yeah, so, it and was. Like, because it felt Smart like she had been around forever. Right. But it's funny that it really was just like a year. Yeah, well, I mean, she she was a model, I believe, before she was yeah. even in the mask. She did some porn. She did some porn? I don't yeah, know if she, that's she true. Did some, she did some softcore. Did she really? Yeah. I don't, think, I don't see I'm, that. I'm not going to look it up page. for you, but uh, take my word for it. I don't know if I will take your word for it. I don't know if I believe right, that. Look, look it up. About old Cammy Diaz. You want the keyboard? You want to look it no, up on the big okay. board? That's okay. We only got eight minutes left. There's a video of her spraying her nipples with a uh, can of uh, keyboard cleaner. Like that, what? That pressurized <laughs> cold air. You're not supposed to spray that on your skin. Well, she did to make her nipples hard. Oh, Cammy D, what are you doing? Um, yeah, I remember seeing that like 10 years ago. Or maybe reading about it. I don't know if I actually. Yeah. Oh, you saw read it. about it. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> we all know what's going on in your life, Jack. I have the video playing on a loop on, at all a, times. on a constant loop in, <laughs> in the other bathroom. room that you never let me go into. Yeah, you can't go in that that's room. That's the Diaz that's, room. That's Diaz pressurized can room. <laughs> what a specific room. It's Some a, people have panic rooms. You have a <laughs> Diaz pressurized it can room. It serves us both. Yeah. It's okay. That's good. Because if you're panicking, that suits you. Did you, you I ever suppose. see Panic Room? That's what I it's did about. Jody Foster and Kristen you're Stewart. Right. They lock themselves That's in the room <laughs> and they watch and they Cameron s- Diaz yep. spray your nips. Wait for Forrest Whitaker to try and find them. <laughs> oh, man. So that's the mask. <laughs> 
really don't have all that much to say about Who the mask. Who directed the mask? Uh, that's a good question. I was going to bring up. I'm the... always surprised that like when there's these super huge cultural zeitgeist movies and the directors really never did anything else. Let's see. Unless it's like Steven Spielberg, and I sound like it a was Steven idiot. Spielberg. That's crazy. I didn't remember that he directed what? it. It was Charles Russell directed the mask. What else did Charles Russell? I don't know do? what the hell he else did. He also did Nightmare on Elm Street Three: Dream Warriors. Oh, that's a good one, I did right? not know that. Yeah, that's the great one. And then he did Wait, the Scorpion King. I thought Reddy Harlan did Dream Warriors. No. Oh, he did, he did the, the crappy four or fifth one, right? Oh, the fourth one's the worst. But we can talk about Nightmare another time. Yeah, he, he directed the Blob remake, the one with, uh, what's his face, um, from Entourage. Dylan. Kevin Dylan. Kevin Dylan, yeah. Yeah, I was a big fan of that movie when I was a kid. That scared the shit out of me. Yeah, he hasn't directed a lot lately. I Am Wrath. It's a movie coming out this year. He directed a bunch of episodes of Fringe. Ooh. So there you go. I'm a big, 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 big Fringe fan. Well, at least the first three seasons. Are you, would you say you're a huge French fan? Huge. Would you tell John Benjamin that you were a huge French I would fan? I've actually did tell him that. Okay. I was like, that by was the way, second. I'm a huge fan, huge fan of a French. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said when your boss was yeah, like, a I'm fan not. of what? I said French. French, I, obviously. It's the spiritual successor to Lost. That's true. Um, you don't know. You didn't watch it. I did watch. I watched French for a number of seasons. I never finished it. You did? You watched the third season? I watched the third. I, I didn't trying to, watch the fourth season. I remember season. trying to tell you. You were trying to, to convince me on the fourth season. No, nah, fourth season's not very good. I watched it's the third season. Third season's amazing. Um, all right, so The Mask. What else do we want to say? Cameron Diaz, we talked about it. Jimmy Ka. Jimmy Ka. Is that what they call him? Jimmy Ka. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know who you are talking about. <laughs> yeah, talking about Jimmy Ka. <laughs> I, was first, I just had a blank look on my face there. <laughs> you did. Um... Amy Yazbek was in the oh, mask. You know man, her? Oh, man, yeah. Um, what happened to Amy she's Yazbek? She's John Ritter's wife. Now, well, she's now John, we John, yeah. She, they met, I believe, in problem, the set of Problem Child. Yes, I think uh, you're right. And they got married. She's the she, mom from Problem Child. She was terrific. I really liked she, she Amy Yazbek. She was on Yazbek. the if you later seasons of Wings. Right, if you don't know who we're talking about, she she's was gorgeous. very prominent in the early 90s. Uh, she was... Dracula dead and loving She it. had red red curly hair. She was made Mary. Oh, made Mary in, 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 in Robin, uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah, she's she was gorgeous. She's a be- beautiful, beautiful woman. I haven't seen her lately. I don't know if she could still be a beautiful. I'm woman. sure she, she is. probably she is. is she just has one of those faces. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. She. Yeah. She was the she was the love interest, right? Uh, I guess before she was Cameron... not the love interest. She was the reporter. Who yeah, was but trying wasn't she? To didn't she and do Ip, something. Stanley Ipkiss have a thing? And he rescues her. Cameron Diaz is almost. By the way, like she a, is still beautiful. Yeah, Cameron Cameron Diaz is almost like a non-starter in that movie. Well, no, Cameron Diaz is kind of uh, like this unattainable object of affection, you know, too beautiful to be with schlubby old Jim Carrey. And she's, uh, she um, ultimately falls, they fall in love. It probably won't work out at the, after yeah, the end of the yeah, movie, but, yeah. you know, they, they do get together. Why doesn't you just get with Amy Asbeck? I don't know. I, I, well, because I think she gets killed. She's like evil. She turns on him at some point she, in the movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember exactly, but despite this, the fact that I've seen this movie dozens of times. That's right, yeah. Um, I remember I had the VHS of the mask. Wow. And, was it uh, yellow? Was the box yellow? Uh, no, it was mostly purple and green. Purple, huh? Yeah, that doesn't make sense now that I think about it. <laughs> There's not a lot of purple in that movie. <laughs> um, but I remember very specifically it had an episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast on it where he on, interviewed Jim Carrey and on Cameron the VHS Diaz. VHS tape? Yeah, there was like an intro from Space Ghost before the mask, and then after the movie was an episode of the show. Oh, that's interesting. You don't see VHS tapes usually play around like that. You usually don't. you just get a couple commercials. And that's definitely a big part of the reason why I loved Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I could talk about that for a whole oh, episode. I hope that, I hope so that's I hope a topic. that comes that up was at some 90s, point. Right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That is, uh, I have the whole series on DVD. Those I are DVDs I will not I, give I up. I never really watched it. I will it. not I, give them up. <laughs> I only watched it uh, here and there on, like, when I oh, caught it on so, TV. It was so good. So ahead of its time. Basically invented Adult Swim, which is now yeah. a ratings juggernaut. So. Is it? Yeah, What's I, on, I, I haven't guess. followed it in so long. Rick and Morty, which you need to uh, get on. I know, I know, I know. All right, we only have three minutes and 20 seconds left. So, so should we get a new topic? Maybe uh, do you want to do a Seinfeld? Do you want to do a lightning <laughs> round topic? We could dip into the, oh, into man, the old that's thing. That's risky. It depends on what the topic is. We can always keep it if we think we have a lot more to say. All right. All right, we're going to ditch the mask. That's gone. We're going to throw, throw it in the river. Throw it in the river where no one can ever get it again. Our next topic, Furby from Mr. Spider Clown. We got three minutes. What can we say about Furby? Oh, they're man. creepy as hell. They're creepy. And um, I remember. They're crawly. They're all together. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Furby, do you remember this? There was a thing. This this ties to something that I don't to even Japan? remember if we were talking no. about it before the show started or we talked about it earlier this episode. Where um, the Kirby, the Kirby's, the, the Kirby. Furbies had a camera I could talk in about them. Kirby. Well, Kirby's another topic. They had a camera. 
supposedly, and people like I remember this in the late '90s. People were paranoid that it was China spying on the U.S. I remember Do you that. remember I thought this? it was a microphone, not a camera. May- Cause maybe because you, you could talk to them, right? Yeah, you could say like Furby, like go shut up, and it would stop talking or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like learn your name and stuff. Yeah, something like that. But it was like, you know, this was 1997. It was yeah. not actually that technologically advanced. Yeah, no, people really thought it was like some kind of China sp- spying thing. Yeah, people were very paranoid. Yeah. Um, that's we, fr- we had nothing to worry about in the 90s. <laughs> I know. So we yeah, invented that, threats. I'm surprised because, like, now I would totally see that. You know, I've been reading the uh, the conspiracy reddits and stuff lately. And Yeah, oh, that's uh, a rabbit hole oh, that you may that, not want to go that, down, that's sir. That's a hell of a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, that's literally what I've been calling it lately, too. Yeah, uh, hell of a rabbit people hole. text me, like, what are you doing? I'm just like, I'm in the hole. Leave me alone right now. <laughs> like, do you know about the crisis actors in Orlando? This is crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to write a. I, I, I want to. I want to talk about this real quick because sure. uh, I, I could never do it. I would be killed. Yeah. But uh, is this about the Illuminati again? No, sort of. I okay. Wanna, I want to make a sitcom called Crisis Actors about crisis actors. Oh no! And it would like open up on like like a school or something where there's a mass shooting and there's pools of blood. This sounds terrible, Jack. <laughs> I'm like, gonna stop you right so now. So yeah, people like walking oh, boy. through the blood and everything, and there's like. Did it have know, to be a school shooting to start this well, sitcom? Well, I, I didn't want to say is? a nightclub because I don't want to make it okay, too real. Yeah. Wanna, yeah. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> school shootings never happen. <laughs> anyway, so so you have the school shooting, and then you pan over, and you just see like a bunch of the victims just like at the craft services table, like eating. Oh my god! And it's basically just entourage with crisis actors, and they're like, "Hey, did you book that Pentagon gig?" I and actually just... could see that being a good like satirical film. Did you, did you see oh, the movie film, Four maybe. Lions? No, it's about I heard uh, of it, it's yeah. about four terrorists. It's a comedy. They're like four. Yes. Um, I don't remember what specific sect they were supposed yeah. to be, but. Yeah, they're like uh, suicide bombers, and it's just uh, all just about the them. idea of crisis actors. Because I didn't even really knew that was a thing until I was uh, uh, reading up on Orlando, and like a lot of people think that Orlando and other school shootings were complete hoaxes set right. up this, by the this government. This is the idea that it was staged. Like, and like nobody actually died. Like the, the, they were actors who pretended to die so that we can. I love that Furby awakened this yeah. in you, but I know, I know I've seen yeah. online that people get like attacked online. Yeah. Like their it's, children were killed, and yeah, they're like, and "You like, didn't really have that yeah, kid." No, like, that was all. Yeah, you're well, an actor. Lying. Yeah, and there's all videos. And because we are all horrible, horrible yeah, people. Yeah. Anyway, we have 15 seconds left. So it's it's a rabbit hole. Go down the rabbit yeah. hole. Anyway, the concept is so silly that I was like, oh, that would be a great sitcom for me. Yeah, yeah. Crisis Act. It's like, did you get the part for the uh, the new 9-11? It's like, no, I missed it. They gave, oh, it, man. To, they gave it to Tom. You know, <laughs> Tom's know. always taking those roles. <laughs> and guys, that is it for Thank this episode God, of 90s That rabbit hole is going to get deep. It does. I'm glad we could squeeze a little Furby in there. I'm going to take it out of the uh, out of the topics. You, you want? You know, should we keep it? Is there more we could talk about Furby? I have. No. No, I have nothing to say. I have absolutely nothing to say about Furby. So it's probably a good thing that we got rid of it. All right, um, Jack. Since it's the end of the show, as we do every episode, what did you learn today? I learned that you are best buddies with Lynn. That's true. Lenny M and M's. Oh, Lenny M and M's. That's what I call him. <laughs> um, what did I learn about you? I learned that you have a, a very dark sitcom premise idea. <laughs> That I don't know if major networks would touch, but yeah, no. maybe you could. Uh, maybe no, you could I would put be, it on YouTube. Honestly, I'd be afraid to put it on YouTube just because I feel like it's true. I feel like. I well, I feel like you get if if, if if the Crisis Actors was a real thing, then I guess I would have something to worry about. I it's feel like you would get silly. the wrong audience, yeah. like people who. You know, it's obviously a fake thing because yeah. these are all horrible, horrible tragedies. Yeah. So no one would want to watch it yeah. except for like these horrible truther type people. Right. right. So well, who knows? Maybe they're right. Well, maybe it's time yeah. someone courted to their interests. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they can can't capture, watch sitcoms. You could be the Alex Jones of the sitcom <laughs> world. <laughs> That could be you, Jack. I would love to be. Well, who's the guy that does Big Bang Theory and uh, uh, Chuck Lorre? Yeah, I'd be I'd love to be the Chuck Lorre Alex Jones uh, <laughs> hybrid. Somewhat <laughs> the, the Venn diagram of those two people. <laughs> it, right in the middle is Jack. <laughs> he does like long rants at it's the end true. of the sitcom. That's true. He does. He does. All right, guys. So that's it for this episode of Nineties Percentile. If you want to follow the show on Twitter, it's at Nineties Percentile. And if you want to follow me personally, I'm at Then Dan Says. I'm at Jackie No Breaks. And if you want more from us, you go to WePodcast.com, which is also where you can support the show. Go to Amazon.wepodcast.com to support the show. You just shop on Amazon like you normally would. And if you don't normally shop on Amazon, what are you doing? Yeah, that's thing Start that shopping got, on Amazon. They have everything. I buy don't, the mask. I've started buying... Uh, buy I start- the, the actual <laughs> mask. I bet you can buy it on Amazon because yeah, you can get everything. I'm buying things I could go across the street and get now. I'm just like, eh, just get it on Amazon. Yeah, well, especially now. Uh, you, have, you have Prime, right? Yeah. Well, actually, no, you sacrificed your Prime so that the Chad Ochocinco <laughs> universe would go away. Um... Yeah, no. It's really been annoying waiting those extra two shipping days. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of is. Uh, they have like same day delivery for certain things now, and if oh, you can do get you have, that, well, holy you have now? crap! 
That well, was probably only a thing in New York and other major markets. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that you, we have it in this area, but I could get it to my office. Yeah, if I wanted you can to. get yeah. something within an hour, an yeah, hour that's delivery. Insane. Yeah. I don't even know where they have a warehouse in Manhattan. I don't think to they do use that. warehouses. I think they build it from scratch and then just they outside do, of your door. <laughs> do you think the Christmas elves work at Amazon? <laughs> I think that's where they when are. When they're now. not at uh, Christmas time, I think they're the ones that are being overworked and cry at their desk. <laughs> I think you are probably right. Uh, before we get out of here, Jack, we have do we have time to read an iTunes review? Uh, we do because. Because we we didn't we ran out, but we just got one. So we just got a new one. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna read one. And guys, if you don't want to pay anything to Amazon for some strange reason, we love Amazon. Maybe you don't. So, uh, since you're reading it and I'm not, and I yeah. can't see it, okay. why don't you point at me every every uh, ten words or so, and I'll try to guess what the word is. All right, let's do that. Uh, but if you do want to support the show, leave us a five star review on iTunes. It helps us out so so much. If we we fell off the new and noteworthy, we want to get back on the yeah, new and noteworthy. Get back on there. Tell your friends. If everyone who listens to this gives us a review. That'll do it. Yeah. I snapped my fingers. I don't know if you guys heard it. <laughs> Bam. Um, yeah. No, word of mouth, uh, definitely our best friend as a, a small-time amateur podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a five-star rating by Greatlin89. So thank you, Greatlin. And Wait, it's, Lynn? Like uh, like Lynn Manuel? Uh, you know, it actually is. It's L-I-N. So my buddy, <laughs> my buddy Lenny M&M's, thanks, man. Oh, I know man. you're he, busy. He wrote this five-star review after I said I think he's smug. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're going to talk Sorry, offline Lynn. about why you think he's smug. Offline. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's... Whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So the title of this review is "Travel Back in Time to the Land of What Jack? Chocolate. It's not <laughs> land of chocolate. It's the land of Seinfeld for okay, some reason. Okay. So thank you, Greatland. Here's what the review is: This podcast causes you to relive your inner um, farts, your inner childhood in the best ways. Super soakers, Ninja Turtles, boogers, boy bands, you name it. Their episode on butts Seinfeld causes you to realize how much shows in the Crisis actors. 90s shaped who we are and how we... Crisis act. Speak. This is a must... Kill. Listen. So thanks so much, Great Lynn 89. Lenny M&M's. Thank uh, you for I'm that. I'm terrible at Mad Libs. You, <laughs> a lot of crisis actors. This episode went to some strange places, so thank you for listening to it. If you did like what you hear, tell your friends. We cannot stress that enough. And um, I think that's it for this episode. Yeah, my name is Jack. And my name is Dan, and we'll see you in another... Boobs. There you go.